Good morning everyone. So uh, time for another video. This morning I'm going to take the Tesla Model 3 long range for the drive that I like to do to Gatwick and back which is about 34 mile round trip. Um, it's a really nice test just to see what it's like driving this car on a short kind of commute that a lot of people would do. So for me that's um, if I'm if I'm at work and I have to drive up to Gatwick that's exactly what I do for my commute. It's 20 minutes there 20 minutes back and it's a 34 mile round trip. So this kind of test represents that style of driving where you might do that kind of commute um, every day of the week and it's a nice way of just seeing how the car performs in terms of consumption with that style of drive and then I'll also do the uh, the interior noise test on the same stretch of the uh, M23 that I did it last time on the Polestar and then put all of that data into the same spreadsheet and uh, hopefully be able to build up that uh, information database on an ongoing basis if I can try out more, more uh, electric cars. So yeah, let's get going. And uh, first thing to do is uh, we'll have a look at the screen, reset the trip computer, and then uh, set up the map display. Okay, so um, yeah, it is such a nice uh, screen on this car. Like that—that that is something that I have to say. Uh, the Polestar screen is really good. It's smaller, and obviously it needs to be smaller because of the way the car is designed. Whereas this one needs to be much bigger because you've got no. You've got no driver's display, so you have to have all the information on one screen, but it does look really, really good. So I'm just going to scroll down here, and then I'm going to reset trip A, and then I'm also going to reset trip B. So this must be a long-term uh, trip. This has been going for 3,390. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> Ruin all of the historical data. I'm going to leave it. So... Um no, actually, I'm going to reset it. Why not? Um, and then I will uh, have a look at trip A when we get there. So in the navigate sc screen, let's uh, let's see where are we going. We are going to McDonald's. Great. So we'll go there. And um, it's showing 56% on arrival. We're leaving with 62%. Okay, so something yeah, I forgot to mention is I preconditioned the car as I would do with um, the Polestar. And uh, this is the great thing about the Tesla is the app. Now, I know we're going to get this on the Polestar eventually, but I have to be honest, it's frustrating that the car was released without an app. I know that this is this is first world problems. Like, you, who really needs an app for a car? But the, 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 the point here is that these cars are very similar price. And there are cars that are cheaper, like the Nissan Leaf that have had apps for years. So... Yeah, I really hope the Polestar app, when it is released, is very good because it's been a long wait for it. And I hope it, it holds up to the quality of the Tesla app. So in order to precondition, it's very simple. Here, have a look at the screen on my phone. So uh, I'll just try and position this better so there's not too much glare. But this is the Tesla app on the phone, and it's so easy to use. You, you know, Literally, all I had to do was download the app and log in. And in t to, to preheat, you can turn on and off the climate on that page but there's quite a lot of things you can do in this app um, and I will go through it probably in a bit more detail but I really hope that the Polestar app is as good as this one so I preconditioned the car probably for let's see it's about half an hour and uh, the good thing about the Tesla is that it doesn't just preheat the interior of the car it also warms the battery so this is something again it would be great to see that on the Polestar I don't know if the Polestar hardware is capable of doing that and it's a matter of dealing with software or if it just isn't something that's a feature on the car now for me again it's not a deal breaker but this is one of the things that's so impressive about tesla is their energy efficiency and the innovation in those kinds of areas now being able to preheat the battery if you don't already know this means that you ha have a battery that will be more efficient and you will use less energy so it will give you a better range and for a lot of people that is a very very useful thing um it doesn't necessarily mean it should be the deciding factor, I don't think, when you're buying an electric car, because there are many other factors to consider, but it is something that is a really good feature on Teslas. Okay, so we've arrived at the usual stop in McDonald's at South Terminal Gadwick, and uh, the consumption is very impressive in this car. I mean, look at the screen here, you can see just uh, 271 watt hours per mile. And uh, when you work that out, that works out at like 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. And that, that's very efficient. If I just have a look at my calculator, assuming 72.5 usable, 27.1 um, is 267 mile range. Now, yeah, that, that is very good. Um, it is much 
much warmer today, uh, so it's 12 degrees. So I don't think it's a particularly fair comparison with my last Polestar test, but I'm gonna put this all into the spreadsheet anyway with temperature mentioned. And uh, there's no doubt that, that like being able to preheat the battery, do all of those things are extremely efficient. And I, I have to say one thing that I really, really like is this on the screen. Have a look at this. So if you're on the main display here, you can see you've got the, the trip computer on the right hand side and then the maps over here. If I tap on that and go to this, you get a nice energy graph display. And this is something that I've been asking Polestar to please implement for quite some time. It isn't, it isn't difficult to do this. This should, this should be there by default, but you can select your historical range. So you can have a look here. It's the, this is the last five miles, the average range. Um, it will show you even this little regenerative sections here where it's done really well at, at uh, putting energy back into the battery and a projected range based on that consumption. So I could then look back at the last 15 miles and I can see here that I had some peaks here of some energy usage and a projected range of 153 miles remaining on 55% or I could look at 30 miles of historical data and get that information. You can also get instantaneous range, um, which will show you what you were, were doing there. Um, now coming into Gatwick, you get off the M23 and then there's quite a long downhill run that brings you into this location. But this is a really, really useful app. Um, I, obviously it's not life changing for many people, but for people who want to have a look and see what the data's like, then uh, it's all there for them. And at the top, you've also got this, um, the trip information display. So you could put a, um, let's go to the map here and say, let's type in, I don't know, where are we gonna, uh, let's go back to where we collected the car from. And that's saying 39%, round trip estimate back to the starting point, 20%. And then let's have a look here on the energy on the trip. Yeah, it's showing you, showing you a graph of, of what to expect. So things like this, I think are very useful. Um, in an electric car because you do have to be more aware of your range and your efficiency and your energy if you want to do long trips. You don't have to, obviously you can just drive it normally, but a lot of people do like to have that information available to them. And I think that uh, that is something that I'd like to see implemented on the Polestar. The driving experience of the Tesla so far, I mean, I've had it only since yesterday, so 24 hours. And uh, it is really nice to drive. It's a nice place to sit. And I really like this in infotainment system. Uh, it's really great. If you like computers, if you like iPads, tablets, uh, that kind of thing, then this is perfect. But the thing that really is bothering me at the moment is the, the, the actual comfort of driving the car compared with the Polestar. It is a lot noisier. So on that stretch of road that I tested the Polestar last time, this time I've come up with an average of about 72 decibels i did actually do a couple of noise tests on some of the other road surfaces at 70 miles an hour and it is very variable this is the thing uh, it always will be and, and things like tires are going to make a difference and, and the wheels that you choose as well but but it is noisy there's no doubt about that and it's it's noticeable it's not just a little bit noisier than the polestar it is significantly noisier there's more wind noise and there's more road noise but there's also a lot more feel of vibration within the road so it doesn't soak up the road particularly well you feel every single little bump in this car and uh for me that is so far this car is excellent i really like it and i'm not trying to find things to criticize but if you are considering the two different cars then i would highly recommend a test drive because the tesla is not to me an immediate winner um it, it, it's uh it does suffer from some actual driving issues that i find compared with the Polestar kind of annoying. The other thing that um, is very different is that the, the steering wheel feel is totally different to the Polestar. At low speeds, it feels very heavy compared to the Polestar. At higher speeds, it seems absolutely fine, but I don't think it has as much feedback. Well, the Polestar doesn't really have any feedback, not compared with a, something like a BMW, where a, a really good BMW, if you hit a bump in the road, you feel it through the steering wheel, and that gives a very engaging driving experience. The Polestar doesn't really do that. It, it takes away most of that for you, which makes for a really comfortable, easy drive, but it holds the road very well, and the steering is sharp and precise. But the Tesla, it feels more vague. I Maybe it's just me, I haven't got used to it, and I'm sure once you've driven it loads, it will be absolutely fine. It's still really good but it, it isn't quite as sharp I don't think as the Polestar. Okay so it's time to head back exactly the same drive in the reverse direction and we'll see what kind of consumption we got so um yeah 2711 hours per mile on the way here and let's see what we get on the way back total it all up.
Okay, so we're back now from that drive and uh, the total consumption. Time to look at some numbers. Um, we got uh, on average there 283 watt hours per mile adding up the two. So the way back was actually really similar. It was slightly, slightly worse, but the average, yeah, 283, which is um, comparing to the Polestar, which if you're used to those kinds of numbers, it's 28.3 kilowatt hours per 100 miles and uh, that works out at a total range on the Tesla of about 256 miles and uh, 3.5 miles per kilowatt so that is so much more efficient than the Polestar like it, it, it's significantly more efficient but something I must emphasize the temperature is a lot warmer it's 12 degrees and then also we've got the preconditioning that heats the battery on the Tesla but one thing I thought would be interesting would be to see what that is is a percentage of the WLTP European range standard testing. So on this car, and I hope I've I hope I've got this right. So I'm sorry if it's wrong, but from what I could find, the WLTP on this particular model is 348 miles, which means that this particular range test gets 73% of the WLTP numbers. Okay, so we are back now from the drive to Gatwick and it was uh, really nice to see how much better the consumption is today with the temperature at around 12, 13 degrees. Driving back, it was 34 miles per, sorry, 34 watt hours per 100 miles. And the average between the two adds up as uh, about 33. So that is a, a big improvement. I'm just looking down at my numbers. I had 39.7 last time I did this when the temperature was zero. And uh, just as a reference point to compare this with the Tesla, the Tesla did it in 28.3. So that's, uh, yeah, this is about 15% more efficient than it was when uh, the temperature was zero degrees. So it's it, it's interesting to see that the Polestar is lagging behind the Tesla on this particular test, which is what we expect. It's a heavier car. It's less efficient. But the key thing is I preconditioned the Polestar as best I could. The Tesla has battery preheating, which I had active before I did that test with the Tesla. And um, yeah, I think the interesting thing to see is that if we had battery preconditioning and preheating, maybe that would help a little bit. Would it help a lot when the temperature is 12 or 13 degrees? Maybe not. So that sort of levels that playing field a little bit. But of course, the Tesla is still more efficient. It's just really nice to do this in the Polestar and see um, those numbers get much better. So at 33 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, based on a usable battery of 72.5, you could do approximately 218 miles. Um, with uh, the conditions like this on a drive like this and based on the fact it was 34 miles that means you could do the drive six times if you wanted to before you'd have to charge up and how does that compare as a percentage of the WLTP well 220 divided by I think um, let's call it say 290 um, it's about that amount it's a 75 percent of the uh, testing standard now that might not seem brilliant but I think something to bear in mind is that it isn't in um, a diesel or petrol car either if you um, are driving a car like that have a look at your average consumption or the next trip that you do that's say 34 miles and then work that out a percentage of what they claim and you'll probably find that in a diesel car for example because it's a fairly short drive that it's no better than 75 percent of the actual testing numbers and uh, that's just the way these things work unfortunately but this is a real world example of about a 220 mile range on a fairly short motorway round trip of 34 miles so yeah this is uh, promising for the summer i think when the temperatures are sort of 15 to 20 degrees that's probably going to be optimal for the car and it'll be nice to see what kind of range numbers we get i think uh 240 is probably reasonable when we get uh temperatures up to sort of 18 degrees which is which is pretty good i'll be um I'll be pleased to get that. 240 as a percentage of the WLTP is about 82%. So fingers crossed that's what we're going to get hopefully when the weather warms up a little bit more. So I hope this has been a useful video and a more fair con comparison with the Tesla than my zero degree test showing that uh, in this particular case it was yeah about 8 to 9% less efficient on this drive. So thanks for watching. If you could subscribe and like down below that would be great and I'll be back again with another video very soon. Thank you.